But joining me right now, live from Buckingham Palace, is Talk TV correspondent Ollie Whitfield Mircic. Uh, good morning to, so good afternoon to you, sorry, uh, Oliver. Um, obviously, there's been a massive reaction, worldwide reaction politically here, and of course, media, you know, 12 pages in every newspaper all about this. Um, from what you know, from what you're talking to, you know, royal sources and royal correspondents, do you think that the king would have wanted to have to give what are really very personal bits of information about his, his, his personal health and make those public? I think what we're seeing, Julia, is the royal family becoming a lot more media astute. They have seen everything. When you look back at the history, the fallout of what happened following the death of Princess Diana, how the media strategy then did not work, which was always to keep quiet and to plough on with the royal work. They know that in this modern age, they have to be open and they have to be transparent because there's always that risk of a leak happening. And so, over the past three weeks, we've seen the palace being incredibly transparent. First of all, with the Princess of Wales going into hospital for that abdominal surgery, and then the announcement only a few hours later that the King would be going into the very same hospital in order to undergo a treatment for his uh, for for that treatment that he had to go and have. And so, this was the latest in that line that. Yeah openness and that transparency that but, the palace but, now believes but I, but is I wonder, a key Ollie, part of it. But I wonder, how much that's been forced on them because of the social media age we're in. I was also thinking there's the talk that Prince Harry has already got on a plane in California and is already flying to the UK to see his father. Some people would say that suggests it is more serious than others. Some might say uh, Harry and Meghan, that's a PR move by them. Some might say a wonderful opportunity for a family rapprochement because actually, you know what? Some things matter more than battles you've had in the public eye about your childhood or your deep out Buckingham Palace courtiers treated your wife. What do you make of all of that? Well, look, I think anybody that's had a family member that's been affected by cancer, it is so, so upsetting, but also it's a very worrying time. And despite a rift, despite everything that's happened in the family, I think it's totally understandable that the king's son would want to come here and see him as soon as possible. We do not know how serious it is. The palace is unlikely to give us any further details than what they have done already. And so that's really a sort of private family matter that will remain within the royal family. As for any chance of the rift being reconciled, we've been down this road before. There was a false hope at the time that the Queen died when we saw Prince William and Prince Harry walking hand by hand with both of their wives, and yet that never seemed to blossom into anything further. So I do think it's a little bit premature to talk about any sort of rapprochement, but certainly I think for any family that has dealt with cancer and the statistics are really quite striking aren't they a thousand people a day in this country are diagnosed with cancer in the longer term it's expected that one in every two of us will be touched by cancer so i think it is totally normal for the prince to be coming here to the uk okay thank you very much good to talk to you ollie uh, whitfield beatrice there outside buckingham palace